Welcome to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal, where our goal is to change the way you practice dentistry by helping you achieve clinical, financial, and personal balance. Now, here's your host, T-Bone. To another episode, another week of the T-Bone Speaks podcast. You know, I've got a couple of great guests on this week, but before I introduce them, because one of my guests is going to try to take over and make this his own, <laughs> like everything else in my life, in his life that he's done. But I want to talk to you about something serious, okay? Something that we're not paying enough attention to. And I have this internal saying called the right equipment for the right job at the right time. In other words, one of the areas that we just don't give enough focus to in our practices is our, equi- is our instruments. And our instruments are so important to have the right equipment to do the right job at the time that we need it. And one of the things that's been very good for us in our practice that we did probably about 15 years ago, we went to a cassette-based system where we had standardized setups that were essentially procedural-based. And for our office, we have three setups. We have our restorative setup, our surgical setup, and our hygiene setup. And those setups need to do 80% of our work. And then we have individual setups in cassettes also for add-ons to that. Now, many of you have probably heard or seen my social media, and if you don't know, now you're going to know that recently we partnered with TBS Instruments to release our 3D Dentist Surgical Kit. And this week, I'm going to be joined by my great friend and partner, Sully Sullivan, and, uh, you know... What's he, up, everybody? He's, <laughs> he is what he is, okay? And then, of course, our main guest of honor this week is Hasib from TBS Instruments. Thank you. This uh, first su- podcast. Super excited. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's a new Let's thing. go ahead and get the jokes out of the way. Okay. I want everybody, if you're listening to this podcast, it is worth going on social media or going to YouTube to see this dude's <laughs> yeah. hair. Okay. This should be the most viewed. <laughs> oh, in, my God. In, so in he is six film. feet tall, and then you take the hair away, and he's five feet five. Oh, my God. It's at least six or seven <laughs> inches tall, that hair. What no about question. the boots? Boots. I also wear the boots, right? So I've never seen a Pakistani that wears boots. <laughs> you got to when you're as short as we are. <laughs> Sully, you feel the pain, right? Luckily, <laughs> I'm from Nashville, so you know people don't think it's weird. <laughs> All right, since I'm going to be the serious one today, uh, Hasib, you are a second generation owner of TBS Instruments. Right. Can you give us a little bit of a history on? TBS Instruments, because I'll bet that 95% of our listeners have never heard of TBS Instruments. Right. Obviously, we want to change that. Um, so tell us, how'd you get into this business? What's the story behind the business, all of that? Awesome. So first of all, Sully and um, T-Bone, thanks for having me. Um, so really should we're just glad to me. have you. We're <laughs> glad to have you. <laughs> You're in my studio, yeah, yeah. just so you know. There's other podcasts you can check out. Play Usually, I'm podcast. the one who's, who's, who's owning that conversation, but I'm just too teamed up with, with both of you guys over here, and I can't even talk about anything. All right, back to the story. But uh, yeah, no, so <clears throat> my dad started the company 25 years ago and um, started distribution of regular private label instrumentation and selling that in, in Mexico and Latin America. And uh, then I graduated out of New York, and uh, my brother and I, and we were like, you know what? We want to do something different. We kind of grew up watching Shark Tank, so like innovation, just IP, and that stuff to me was really important. And I was like, I, I went to the manufacturing facility. I saw a regular forcep, and I saw And you a guys manufacturing yourself? Yes. So you guys were turnkey, vertically integrated. Yes. You designed, you manufa- your dad designed, manufactured, and sold in the Mexican and Latin American Right. Market. How did he get into dental? He was just an entrepreneur. He tried selling leather. He tried selling medical instruments, dental instruments. So really, it was just kind of whatever. It was, was, it was something to stick on some level. Exactly. Yeah. Something to stick on. And he just happened to find Mexico. And Mexico was something where he started building the brand. And, um, you know, TBS really what stands for is T is an Arabic word means meaning taqwa. It means believe in God. B is Bashir. That's my grandfather's name. S is Sajid, that's my dad's name. Way cool. So it's uh, that's that's the story with that. And then, you know, he was... I thought it sounded for T-Bone Speaks. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened to me. Like, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. This is a great yeah. partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was basically what he, he... We were, when he was doing the manufacturing, we were doing almost 70% in-house, right? My vision, my idea was that there was only way that we can control qualities if we do 100% inside. So that was something which has never been done before, different and stuff like that. But 
uh, when I got in the business, I saw this idea of a ronjor, and it was springing back because of the external str spring outside, and uh, and I saw a forcep. I'm like, Dad, why doesn't a forcep open by itself? I mean, what's the, what's the deal with that? He's like, you know, I don't think so. It's possible. I don't think it's it's ever done before. I'm like, have you seen a forcep that actually opens back itself? He's like, uh, no, I haven't seen it. And I'm like, you know, my shark tanky mode kind of got in, and I'm like, you know what? I asked my brother, I'm like, Let's design this. And I'm the one who's like, who's a little lazy between the duo. And I'm I like, I couldn't tell. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> he's the he's the hair and the personality. <laughs> and he's the one who gets stuff done. And I'm like, we so want to. So he's the Wozniak, that. and you're the Jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that exactly. So it's like we need to get it done, and he gets it done with that, right? So it was, um, it was just that that simple idea of putting a spring inside, and it was like. How can we make this different and better? And uh, I started out in New York with basically nothing, and it was knocking on doors, really. So I've been kicked out of offices, uh, thrown out of offices. At one time, I walked into NYU, and they're like, uh-uh, you can't do that. So they really kicked me out of there okay. as well, but we, it was different. We, we got to ask some questions, because I want to hear about getting kicked out, but I want I want to go back a little bit. So you're, what does it mean? Because, you know, for a lot of us... The, the, this is kind of something that's like different, right? I mean, as Dennis, the idea of creating instruments, manufacturing in-house. Talk a little bit about that. What does that process look like, right? So, you know, even going back to when you were growing up and you're seeing your dad, you know, try and put this together before mm -hmm. you kind of got, you and your brother got involved. Yep. What does that mean? How does that work? Give us a little background into just the, the background of the business side of what that means to manufacture things and to do that your own versus... So it's 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 exciting it's different but what it is is basically there's a lot of processes that happen before that right the first thing is like if you see an instrument i'm talking about regular forcep if you see a regular forcep you walk in a manufacturing facility like our manufacturing facility you see a forcep you'll be like how the hell did this thing go from this to like the frings right it's like it's black it's it's not heat tempered there is nothing like no process or anything so we import our steel from germany that's why our quality is far superior, different. And then we do all the processing inside, passivation, the color coding, the, the blue and the silver, the polishing on it. Um, it's that kind of process, but then there is basically a lot of handmade stuff as well that has to go into this as well with this. So finishing-wise, polishing-wise, and just the R&D stuff on it is, is a lot. Is it similar to on some level like how we make crowns? Like is this CAD cam design basically yep. and then milled or is that... Uh, CAD CAM, once you do, basically, it's done with molds. The okay. biggest thing so with this... castings. Is, exactly. Okay. Yeah. No, it's yeah. forging. Forging, Forging, sorry. yep. So casting is not that strong. Right. Forging is really strong, right? So it's once you have the mold, you have the AutoCAD drawings, once you make the mold, then you can do different frings or different... Any instrument from that mold. And what it is is basically a forging that steel because it's strong and it has strength in it. Yeah, so kind of like with golf clubs. We know that as a golfer... Forged clubs typically have better feel. Exactly. They have better, they have better performance yep. versus cast clubs. Casts exactly. oftentimes hollow and different things like exactly. that. Exactly. So, yeah. And, you know, that's, that's the beauty of it because hmm. if it's just casting, it's basically like just pouring it in. It's like so much goes into from start to like the finish part. Well, that's why I was curious because I don't know what. Yeah, it's. it's well, I, I think <clears throat> also some of that is the geeky part of this, right? Yeah. Because to most, like to me, I'm black and white. I'm yeah. like, hey, I need an instrument. I need it to work. Yeah. Whether it's cast or forged to a certain degree, I care only because I understand the differences. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that a lot of people, they, they, they're like, okay, I just need good instruments yep, that sure. work. Yep. So I want to address one thing, okay? And I didn't pre-warn you on this, okay? So yep. let's, let's talk about it. <laughs> I think the elephant in the room is there is a <clears throat> belief, mm -hmm. and there has been my experience in the past, that oftentimes instruments from Pakistan are typically not as good as instruments made uh, in Germany or in the U.S. or something like that mm -hmm. from some of the bigger names that most of us are familiar with. Mm -hmm. How would you address that for somebody that's listening and says, hey, I bought some stuff off eBay. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was, you know, it was a different price, but I got it and it just didn't work as well. Right. So that's, that's a really awesome question. And we, we, I get asked that all the time. 98% of the instrumentation in the world is made in Pakistan. Okay, what happens is the processing. So if you use a good steel, after that is basically the concept, the pores of the steel is what's important. Rust always comes from inside. 
corrosion can happen because you just have water there or you just have solution there. That's the fault of usually the sterilization person doing that. Rust is, if the steel is good, it won't have rust, right? Germany owns that really because they have forging mills and they have these places where they're basically getting steel uh, kind of made over there it is, is to the next level. So their steel is really good. U.S. steel is good. A lot of companies in Pakistan is cost. Right. Okay? Um, well, they're I serving mean, different markets. And they're serving, so exactly. And what it is is what processing you're doing. So all, it all depends on proce processes, the passivation, the finishing. If the, the faster you finish the product or the, the faster you cool down a product, you're going to have problems. You're going to have pores out of that. And it's, it's, the bottom line is, like, it's honestly, it's the process and the company who owns that. You know, and we, because we control that, we stand behind it, and all the TBS instruments are lifetime warranty. If anything happens to them ever, you send them back to us, we give you new ones. And, you know, you guys have been using it for a while now, you guys have been testing it for a while, and we take pride in it, but it's just that, you know, the steel that you're using and the process that you're doing. In Pakistan, because, you know, you go to, you go, on eBay and stuff like that, you could buy a Forza for a very low price. <laughs> you could buy an elevator for a very, I've very done low it. price. You know? I've done it. <laughs> and, you know, what, what my dad used to sell in Mexico was a, was a price difference was unbelievable. But I was like, no, we want to have something that's going to last forever, something that is cool, sexy, and innovative. And one thing I wanted to address was that when a lot of companies make product, and because now we've been working this closely, people just copy stuff. But I like to question the whys and the hows. Why is that there? What, what's the purpose of it and how I can make it different? Just the sharpness of it, just the look, little innovative product on it. And we'll go over that in our, in our later part of the interview because every single instrument designed by us at 3D is, it has a purpose. It has a purpose. It's sure. not like, okay, you know what? Let's just put an explorer and we just have an explorer. You know, um, I want to move to the next step. Yep. And, uh, but what I want to say is, your story is the story of so many of my Indian friends. You know, their parents came over to the U.S. We lived in cockroach motels. We made <laughs> no, no. We made That's a right. good living. Yep. Did you okay. also live in a cockroach motel? No, but I've I've stayed at Motel Eight, Super Eight, <laughs> and stuff no, no. like that. When step I was that's up that, above. That, that's high, high level. High class motel. <laughs> that's high class. High okay. class. But no, but my point <clears throat> being is, like for example, I'll use me. Yeah. We, we had cockroach motel. We had a you know, a little bit below Super 8. And I saw all of this, and I always said, why do we have to play in that market? Right. Okay, I always used to ask my dad, why do we need to be in that market? And my dad said, because it's a market that we can serve. It's easy. The cost of introduction is, is there. Mm -hmm. And it's a market that, quite frankly, will always do pretty well. It won't make you rich, but it will always be secure. Mm -hmm. And then my generation, okay, now I didn't go into the motel business necessarily, but my generation, they always took what the father or the parents built and they went the next level. They said, hey, I right. want to be in the Marriott business. I want to be in the Hilton business. I no longer want to be in the mom and pop business. And my, parent, my dad always said to me, well, that's not the business I want to be in. This is the business I know. Right. And then I always said, well, when I do it, if I do it, I want to be in this business. Right. And that's kind of really what's happened for you. Is right. You guys saw that level of business and you said, I know we're capable of more. Yep. And your dad was like, good for your dad. He's like, hands off. He's like, yep. I'm going to stay in my Mexican market. Yep. It's the market I know. You guys go do what you want to do. I'll give you the support to be able to do it. Nailed is that it. Kind of, is that kind of it? That's exactly what it is. That's yeah. exactly what it it's, is. It's the, it's cool. it's the uh, immigrant mentality. Yeah, right? That's exactly because what Because we is. don't want to be like, we don't want to be in that business. Exactly. Right? We want to be the step next step. That's exactly so. He also right. made it look good. That's definitely, that, that's, all, <laughs> that's my hair. generation yeah. right there. No, but uh, that's part to have some swag, right? right? The part of it is, is, but part of it is yeah. and I think that builds into the next step is what's different. Yeah. Instruments have been the pretty much the exact same exactly. since I started dentistry in 2000. Yep. 1999, I graduated. 1993, I picked up my first dental instrument, and it was the silver Mold thing, yeah. right? yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, and it, yep. it never looked any different. Yep. And then the first time I ever saw a black instrument, mm -hmm. I, was I was like, I like, need one of those. I'm like, wow, I need one of those. And then yep. I saw the price of it. And I was like, well, I don't really need it that bad. <laughs> so how are you able to, what, number one, what's different and unique? And how are you able to meld the ability to make something that's very cool looking, very, very functional, and yet is affordable. Correct. So um, my model, first of all, is I sell through dealers, right? And that 
gives me a broad range of doctors out there to go talk about the product. But what TBS is really is, I, I have a couple of things in my mind. And when people ask me that, I'm like, well, it has to look cool. It has to be sexy and it has to have a purpose. You know, that's basically what TBS is. So every single instrument, I question the whys and the hows in that. And where I learn mostly is with surgeries. So TBS does not sell all products. We only have probably like 25 products that we sell. And now this is like the 26 product that we have in our SKU. I only sell something that is unique and different that has a, that has a purpose. Because if you go and I've been, I'm talking about like I've been to Alaska, North Dakota and everywhere else. You go to these offices, they have like draws and draws full of instruments. Mm -hmm. And what we are trying to do is with our instrumentation, making them efficient, right? Efficiency is really important with the cassette system, with using the right tools. You said it yourself, and I ask this question to every doctor, and I'm going to ask you this. I don't know if our listeners know that, um, but name me one superhero that does not have superpower. Well, I don't know. I mean, you stumped me. Yeah. One superhero that does not have superpowers. Spider Man? No. He has the he, he got bit by the spider, yeah, so he okay. has that. Batman. Batman. Which is kind of depending on which Batman you like know, but like you're kind of right, yeah. What does he have? He's like super strong and mentally tough. Those he's, superpowers? He's got the tools. Uh, he's got the belt. That's right? true. He's got the, the gadget. He's got the car. He's, he's got, got the, the what's the what's his the, the, butler, the, the, butler guy? the butler guy, but the utility Alfred. belt. He's got Alfred. He's got Alfred. He's got the people, but he's got the utility belt. You're right, he's got the belt. <laughs> don't sorry. ruin, don't I'm ruin sorry. my children. He's got the tools. I get where we're going. The, the tool belt. Exactly. He's got the tools. I'm on a mission he to provide the, the fun right tools. tools, right? Yeah, he's exactly. got his little lab where he's La making stuff, making and everything. stuff, yeah. and all that stuff. And, and it, it looks good. Yeah. It looks good. And that's basically the mentality. We are here to provide you the right tools. And you said it yourself as opening the podcast. It's like the right tools. The last thing you think about is something in your hand. But if you have the right tool, it makes you faster. It gets, you, it gets the work done a lot more efficient and gets you better results with that. And that's what we're trying to achieve with that. That's why we're different. We're not someone, okay, you know what? Let's just get into every market or something like that. I do a lot of surgery, so I see what problems you're having. And I'm like, okay, how can we make it different? And you'll be amazed at how many dentists are like, you know what? Yeah, I have this idea. I have that idea. I could, I could do this. I could do that. And where we saw the need is like, you said it yourself. I want to design a kit. I want to have a kit that can solve 80% of dentistry. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I think that's what we have achieved here. Because people are just, they're using the same tools. Either they inherited from office or they got it from their dad. Or they got it when they graduated school. Or it was just when they bought the practice. And they are like using the same exact tools. Because a good instrument will last you forever. Yeah, you know, I, what I also noticed a lot of times was that I had all the tools, but they were all over the place. Yes. You know, I'd be like, hey, you know, let's get this set up. Well, okay, I need to go get this, you know, this second yeah. drawer, look right yep. here. Yep. And I'm like, that's inefficient to me, yeah, right? Exactly. So to me, it's not necessarily having special instruments, mm -hmm. right? Or having something groundbreakingly unique. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's just about having something purposeful. Right. And, and, and to me, it's about setting up a system mm -hmm. where you can open up something and 80 to 90% of what you do. Like, I can do anything... With a 3D kit, one of when we talked, mm -hmm. okay, one of the things that was important to me is was that it has to be affordable, right? Okay, it has to be great. So let me back up. It has to be good quality. Yep. Okay, I'm not going to put my name with something that's not good quality. Correct. It has to be affordable, mm -hmm. and it has to answer: Can I do 80% of my dentistry with it? Mm -hmm. In our case, surgical. I can do from single tooth extraction to full arch cases mm -hmm. with everything that's in this kit. The only thing I need for a full arch case that I don't have in this kit is a chisel. Right. Okay, and that's because I don't use it but on those cases, so I'm not going to exactly. put it in there. And you're still using a chisel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. We can talk about <laughs> No, I think the chisel's are great, man. It Are you kidding great. me? No, but it's true. I mean, that's what's been, you know, what, we've had this now for probably three months or so. Yeah. And between wisdom teeth, single implants, full arch stuff, you know, broken teeth, broken down teeth, root tips, mm -hmm. it's been able to meet 95, yeah. I would say higher than that percent. Yeah. I'm PRF, not, PR, right. PRP, yep. bone grafting. My pick, and I think elevators. my team's the one that they're yeah. the ones that are the and most thankful. Yeah. You know, well, there's two things, two two ways I'm really thankful. One is to your point, when things were all individually bagged, we didn't have everything that we needed in one kit. I would almost be hesitant to go open it. Yeah. Like, right. oh, we gotta go get it. Like, I'll just, I'll get it. Just give me a second here. You know, where it's like again, the right tool for the right, right. job makes 
all the difference in the world Correct. in in your success and, and the timing of your success. And then I found myself buying lots of stuff. Yep. Sure. Because yep. like, oh, in this one instance, you know, I learned this from my. I, I again, when it comes to my surgery stuff, I have so much I need to. I owe to my oral surgeon, your day rebuy. Yeah. And, and what I learned was from him was he says I learned by figuring out how to make it work with my one cassette. Yeah. And. And instead of learning how to use all these fancy instruments, he said, I learned how to work within what I got. It's like I can prep a whole mouth of teeth with three burrs. Right. right. That's all I need. Wow. And I didn't learn yep. that I need this burr, this burr, this thing, this does this. I didn't become so specialized with everything. I learned how, let, let's get something that's simple, yep. efficient, streamlined, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let me figure out how to work around that. And so I'm, you know, I need two forceps. I need an elevator. Exactly. You know, I, I need a few other things. And I can do pretty much anything, anything I need to and do everything. Yep. that I want. And, and so that was important to me. Exactly. So and to add to what you guys are saying as well, this is not like we designed it and we're launching it today. You guys have been testing yeah, it. Yeah, I've been, been about six it. months now. No, exactly. more than. I started last year. So yeah. I got my first kit in the middle of December. Exactly. So I've been six months now. So you've been using it. Gosh, I guess I have, uh, how are we in May already? It's in May. Yeah. May. It is probably yeah, in six months. Time yeah. is going that fast. So one thing I forgot to mention was the cost, right? So you said how how are you able to make it sexy, cool, and innovative. And good quality. And good quality at an affordable price. So the first thing that we hear is because everything is done in-house, right? Mm -hmm. And it's made in Pakistan. So we're able to control the cost. We're able to control zero to 100 processing from there. And we control the distribution. That's why, I mean, when, we, when you guys will... Uh, let the price know let the, our audience know about the price it's the most affordable kit out there with the product that we have in there yeah. period and that's what your goal was as well you were like i see i want to have it affordable for everyone out there we're not going to charge like four or five thousand dollars for a kit that solves all the all the problem with that we want to make it affordable so people can use it and appreciate it and let's make everyone well, better and my argument is is look some people are going to be like this is a lot of money Okay. Right. The retail price is twenty five hundred dollars. Yep. Our pre order price is two thousand dollars, basically. Mm -hmm. And people are gonna say, "Oh, that's a lot of money," but I'm gonna be like, "You only need a couple of kits." Yep. Okay. Because how many of us are really doing that many surgeries all day long? Right. You know, our our market isn't. My, you know, at least for me, my market isn't surgeons. No. Nope. People doing surgery all day. Exactly. You know, they've got. They're very specific about what they but want. But even when was the last time you bought a kit, a surgery kit? Six years ago. Okay. Yeah. So. If you go buy off, like I'm called, I'm talking about good quality yeah. surgical kit. Oh that's my gosh. usually yeah, Easy. that's usually I'm three thousand to thirty five hundred dollars. Well, yeah, the problem, problem is, but we're doing it. And we bought it piece piecemeal, yeah. and that's the problem too. That's exactly is like right. I've got. If you look at all my surgical kits prior to the three dentist kit, it's that each one doesn't have the same stuff. Right. I and mean, one's got this well elevator, yes. one's got this elevator because they're kind of piecemeal together, right. which is frustrating, and it's frustrating for my team. Yep. Because they're trying to like figure out which ones go and where, yep. what I want. Yep. You know, and so that, I think, like, my team's been the most pumped about this because they're, like, finally one thing. I don't Organized, have to individually bag right all there. this stuff. Exactly. Oh well, gosh. let's open up the box and and we'll talk about some of the instruments. We don't have, yep. I don't want to go through every little Consistency, instrument. Consistency, I've right? actually got a 20-minute video that Hasib is convinced nobody's going to no, watch. No, we're not going to do <laughs> <laughs> That walks through every instrument right, in the you, kit. Why don't you open so, that? Yeah, so uh, let's take a peek. The first thing that's important to me is it's a cassette. Right. right. You open it up, it's there. And the know. beautiful emblem of the 3D. Come yeah, on, certainly. The, there's a little bit of ego in this that we want the emblem it's the there. It's the sexy, the edginess you know. to it. Come but, on. But uh, it's easy. You open it up. Well, and, and like we have to, we have to Put know, in, realize yeah. too, like in the day and age, so we look have... how easy that is to open and nothing falls out. And that way we have everything. You literally set it on your desk. 20 and you're instruments. Good to go. Yep. Yeah. And then we got the bar system on top. So yeah. you basically have on top instruments and you have the bottom instruments, right? And then. Talk to me about this because I know we, we were going back. And well, so you listen, you've probably made other kits. Yeah. Okay. And when I came to you, I know you were frustrated with me because I was very particular <laughs> about some of the things I wanted. Okay. Of course. So, uh, Sully, what, walk through, what, tell me, what, which of these instruments do you think was uh, the, the most in interesting that you've put to use? <laughs> oh, my gosh. The most. In so, one of the things that I've uh, – naturally, I tend to attract with a Pritchard or a Nymolt. And so, yeah. I love the, the – the, the with the molt in having the the holes in it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so now you can use that to not only retract, but then you can put that over a socket and suction, suction. over the top of it. So even when you've got bone graft in there, you know that was always a challenge: is your your 
you put the bone in there. There's still blood coming out. You're trying to use cotton rolls, keep the bone, you know, keep everything kind of whatever. And it's been nice to be able to just throw that thing on top of there and the, the assistance can suction and kind of keep the, the site clean. Is so that that's what a, that's for? That's, that's what I like. <laughs> Um, you know, for me, totally the, using wrong. <laughs> you know, for me, it's 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 interesting. I know this is silly. Yeah, okay? this was the yeah. I, I was very particular about my Your explorer, my, explorer. My, yeah. ex, my surgical explorer and probe. And here's why. Okay, number one, it's not a really a probe. It's an implant measurer. I use it after I do my osteotomy to measure, to feel around, to make sure that there's bone on all four walls. You know, most of us that have done implant surgery, we've got something similar to this, but. To me, the Explorer, and that's because I noticed that every surgical kit I had, my Explorers were bent. Mm -hmm. And I use this Explorer because in, in, in surgery, you don't need an Explorer, mm -hmm. really, if you mm -hmm. think about it. Mm -hmm. I use the Explorer for a very specific purpose, mm -hmm. and that specific purpose is to remove Teflon or polyvinyl siloxane out of my screw access holes. And so many of my regular dental Explorers right. became bent. So I wanted an Explorer that was tough, but yet it was like an explorer, so I could get in there. I need it to be longer so I can get down in there, hook the cotton, hook the Teflon, and pop it out. I'm not saying this is the reason to buy the kit, but just the thought, some of the thought that goes it, into yes. it so that we have it uh, was – so I'm, I'm most proud of that instrument. I personally. know, because when you told me about this, oh, I want an explorer which is thicker and which is longer, I'm like, what, what is that? I mean, seriously, it doesn't have a purpose. And when I told my team that, that we want to have an Explorer, they're like, are you sure about this? Yeah. <laughs> We've never had an Explorer that is longer and thicker that does not bend or anything like that. So little thing on that, but I want you to touch on basically every almost 95% in the uh, doctors in the in the country are using a needle driver, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that was, yeah. I was going to be my second one probably. That was gonna be, I think this was the <laughs> argument internally. It was. Uh, yeah, it was. Was, was I fought because I fought it. <laughs> Yep. Because, again, I was focused on the price, and yep. it turned out the cost wasn't significantly nope. different in the scheme of things, not different nope. at all. Nope. But we went with Castro Viejos. Right. Uh, nope. Sully, you talk, you've used exactly. Castro's, and so you, you're you the one that ultimately convinced me. And Sully was me. on my team because T-Bone was like, ah, whatever, we're fine. Well, well I I that's the, all the, I knew. The, the, we challenge were like is, Castro. The, the challenge is that so many people have grown up using needle drivers. Right. So it is what they're used to. But my challenge to T-Bone was like, hey, what – what you've created in 3D Dentist, part of your entire message is to create disruption, right? Yeah, to not sandal for the status correct. quo, to push ourselves to be better. And to me, that's what the Castro's is. It's like when you get – it's obviously uni it's unique and different when you first start using the right. instrument. Um, but once you get it dialed, it's so much smoother, I can't, I can't, easier to I handle. I can't do it. I mean it's amazing. Your hands don't yeah. hurt like the yeah. needle holders. <laughs> You're faster. You're not plumbing around. You're right. And one of the things I really love about this particular instrument – is when you're looping and you're pulling the knot tight, you're not getting stuck in there. Right. right. You don't get caught on the, the ledge. Yeah. Yep. And then I like having the Castro scissors, too. I mean, it kind of the same, same concept same there. Thing. That's yeah. exactly right. My team took time to get used to this. <laughs> but, again, everything, uh, you know, when you start something new, yep. uh, it takes time to get used yep. to it. And um, it's been pretty amazing. I mean, and that's, they've And you're right it. about that because the, the most annoying part of a surgery is when you're using a Castro and get stuck on the hinge and you're pushing it down with your finger. That's like, you know, what's, what's up with that? Like the seamless on the Castro's are um, basically the hinge is, is making it easier for you, right? It's, it's making, making life easier. Now, um, then remember we were talking about the curettes, having mm -hmm. the curettes, and you were like, we got to have the serrated yep. curettes. So we got the serrated curettes in there as well. Because when we built, like, when we talked about this camp, we were like, what do we need in it? Really, like, the goal was, okay. The I didn't start with, sorry, I didn't start with what's available. Yep. I said, this is what I have. Right. This exactly. is what I need. Right. What I need. Yeah. And we were looking at the dentist who, hey, we're starting socket preservation. You know, the right. dentist that's, that's wanting to place 30 to 50 implants a year. Yes. It's really trying to get into their career Correct. and get going. That, that doesn't necessarily have the instruments, doesn't know where to start to make it right. simple and easy. A big thing I love about it is that, I'd never had a cassette, a surgical cassette that included the forceps. Yeah. So yes. now I had my my cassette over here, and then we had to bag, bag forceps, individually yeah. bag all the forceps, which was frustrating. Yeah. And so now we've got you know 150 and 151, um, basically, you know, in the cassette, so that you know again with 90 percent of things you can use those two forceps. I'm not having to go uh, individually bag them. And I'm to glad me, even you... as simple as a syringe. Yeah. Yeah, like you can't do syringe not bagged. You right. can't do yep. surgery without a syringe, yep. right? And and I hated it when, you know, sometimes my third assistant would work with me and the syringe wasn't there and all of that. So, you know, I think it's just about having everything. Another instrument I really like that we went back and forth on yep. was mini rangers or micro rangers. They're so good. Uh, and, and it's because 
Honestly, rangers are designed to cut bone. Yep. That's typically what most people get rangers for. And most general dentists aren't going to be doing a lot of bone cutting. Correct. Okay. So instead, I use rangers sometimes to grab roots. Yep. Okay, small roots. But I usually use it to pull out granulation tissue. They're right. And for me, mm -hmm. this is about taking out granulation tissue. Mm -hmm. When I lay a flap and I'm placing an implant, I see little tissue tags mm -hmm. sticking out on the crest of the bone. Uh, the mini ranger does so good to get in there and just pop that out. Uh, so it's important for me to have a mini rangeur Correct. Uh, for, for that specifically. And to add to what Sully said is like, we've, I've been selling frames for about now three and a half years, almost uh, with, with dealers, with Patterson. But what we basically did first time ever was to include forceps, the frames in right. the cassette, yeah. because that was the big, biggest thing. And now, now we got two forceps, which is basically a 150, 151, 151. upper universal, lower mm -hmm. universal, and a rangeur. Mm -hmm. That's all you really need. It really is. And the first time ever, because I, I was like, I never sold elevators with, with, with us, but we all have one elevator, which was Sully's favorite elevator. <laughs> so he's like, we well, <laughs> and so, and I'll, let me talk about the elevator, because, you know, I, look, I, if someone's going to push an elevator, it's me, because I wanted to have, it was really important to me that we didn't have some big, chunky elevator. Right. You know, I, uh, you know, my dad's my surgery mentor, yep. and, and he's always been a big Luxator guy, and really, you know, having these delicate elevators. And and so I wanted to be able to put that thing to use. And I'm really happy with kind of where we've we've gotten to with me being able to aggressively use this thing, you know, as a Luxator and to get into small areas without it being... Uh, some giant elevator and whatnot. So and to that, that be able was... to use it to bang on, like, right. to, yeah. you know, to actually go down the PDL to do gent gently. Gent <laughs> because to me, because to me on some level that, you know, between like the boozer was one I wanted as well, yep, you know, yep, because it's the one that. I start with everything between, yep. but after that, the elevator is almost on some level, the instrument you're using every single time, right? Yeah. right? So it can, it has to be good. I, I mean, if you're doing thirds, you have to use an elevator, right? right? If you're doing all that stuff, this is a comprehensive thing, right? This is what our goal is, what our idea is. Um, talk to them about what our mirror handle is and why yeah. is that different, I was right? I was so impressed with This was you, was, <laughs> yeah. We were trying, what can we... Because obviously we're trying to be well, we should proficient. Always, well, we should always use both ends of the instrument, right? Correct. Yeah. Think about this. So, so a mirror is a mirror, right? Right. No problem. But what, what, what useful is the other end of the mirror? Nothing. So on this one, yeah. we have a measuring tool. Yeah. So that's nice. So let's say you're using a, for example, not that you use an endophile doing surgery, but you can measure an endophile. You can take your, your, uh, your implant burr and yeah. measure that side. You can take a piece of tissue and measure right. how big a piece of tissue is. There's so much we can do with it, and it's typically an afterthought, right. but it's a, it's a slightly useful instrument. Exactly. You know? And honestly... Why not? Yep. It's on the end of a mirror that... Well, and pig, <laughs> you know, piggybacking that with a probe, we did kind yeah. of the same thing on making making the Both probe end. a little chunkier. Correct. So we can use it to pack a bone. So we can use it as Correct. a small plugger. You Correct. Because that, that's the... I mean, how many times it's like, do you make this one plugger that's like trying to be universal, but now we've got a bigger plugger on our, our bone packing, right. you know, in our, in our and bone scooper, carrying, right? in the scoop, yep. right, on the exactly. one instrument, but then on the the, um, the other, other one with the probe mm -hmm. and the... Explorer, I just went blank. I was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> it's because it's so chunky. Sully's in the mood to go out there and play golf because it's so nice. And he's like, Hasib, nice. we love you so much because that this is why I'm inside. Otherwise, I would be out on the true. on the golf course. With, so with many of us have heard of proximators. Yep. Okay, so that's an <clears throat> instrument similar to this. This yep. You guys call it an elevatome. Right. Uh, and, and I always looked at those proximator kits. I was like, that's amazing. But I, always, I bought the whole damn kit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have them. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I use one. Yep. Like, why would I? Why would I buy eight instruments or six instruments, whatever's in there, when essentially 90, 80, 90 percent of the time I use one? Straight, so yeah. we got we got the straight spade here, yep. and I use this quite a bit to help you know remove teeth. To me, forceps should just be removing the tooth out of the socket. Correct. Most of the work should be done right. by an instrument like this right. and the elevator, and then the forceps should just be there to retrieve the tooth. Right. Typically from the back of the throat. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but the elevatome is very nice, and and you talk often about what's unique about your elevatome. Can you talk to talk to us yeah. about what's so, unique about it? The biggest difference with this is that spades have been out there for a very long right. time. Like, you know, for about, like, I think, 12 years now, spades have been out. But what, what the thing is this, most, almost every spade out there, when we launched this Elvatome like four years ago, was it's flat. Mm -hmm. But a root is always concave. 
So our elvatomes, when we designed them, they were con- they, we started doing concave, and then the inside of the leaf, which I call it, is polished mm-hmm. because then that slides in a little more easier, and we made them a little more the neck of the and the the blade of the elvatome to be a little more thicker because a lot of times what happens is your tips are kind of bending, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because it, it's it's natural. It's for a force. We're using force. Exactly, and it's natural. I mean, the bone is hard, right? So you have to use force. You have to push it down and everything, and it has to have the strength to do it. And if, if it's bending, then there is really no point in that. So that's basically that. But um, why don't you talk about? Um, I'll let Sully do that. Uh, why don't you talk about the scalpel handle, which which uh, you, you got the, us uh, at? the ejector, the ejector, the scalpel. That. Look, I, I'm a big scalpel guy, yep. right? I mean, I, I like to make a lot of incisions, and especially because I do a lot of third bowlers. So yep. for me, that was something that was important. And 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 to me, we've again talk about innovation. We've moved beyond scalpel holders yep. that don't have an ejecting thing. Yep. I mean, at this point. We do need to seriously consider the fact that, you know, we get a lot of people using and touching these instruments. And Correct. from a safety standpoint, I think it's a no-brainer, too. So you, if you haven't used uh, a scalpel handle that has the ejector, right. it's it's so nice. A really nice Safety, feature. right? Yeah. Safety. That's what we're in right now. We want it to be safe for, for us, for our staff, and everyone. So, you know... That's um. That's basically yeah, our, our kid. Team. And then, right. Well, our and going team. and even for our team. like what's funny is so <laughs> looking at the next instrument on there, it's it's cotton pliers, yeah. right? right? Which again, what I have to give you credit for, Hasib, is that it's there is so much attention to the detail of how can we take something that's a normal instrument that everyone's obviously seen them a hundred times and make it a little better. And so, like the cotton pliers are way slender mm-hmm. and longer, the angle slightly different. So that we can actually get down into PRF tubes, yeah. which right. is, you know, I mean, and those of you who have done PRF know what I'm talking about because normal ones won't fit in there because of the right. angle. And, um, and, and they've, that's been one of my favorite ends. And they're a little longer, they I are. think, than yeah. normal cotton yeah. pliers. And so for well, carrying I, membranes. I, I, I talked to them about it. I wanted the cotton plier because I hate buying the, the PRF box. The, you need the box, but I hate buying all the instruments. Again, separate. Mm-hmm. Right. I know it's just more parts and pieces for them every to time get out, we do right. it, Every time we do a surgery, we're going to do PRF in our practice. That's our standard of caring in yep. our practice. So why should I have to undo another cassette right. or another bag of instruments outside of the box, right. you know, the PRF box? Right. I have everything I need in our normal surgical kit exactly. to do the PRF portion of it. So. And I know you told me you wanted a, 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 a college plier, a regular mm-hmm. cotton plier, and I'm like, no, we're not going to put that. Yeah, because it's just boring. It was. It's just. And there's there's not one instrument there looking. that's like a, it just boring. No, not, not something not. It's not unique about exactly. it. Exactly, and everything is useful. As you said, you could do PRF with this. You could do bone grafting. You could do socket preservation. You could do extraction. You could do almost ninety percent of dentistry with this same kit. That and it's streamlined. It's it's same. It's same for your staff. It's same for your for your team. And be, everyone is like, it's just efficient. Yeah. Well, I think we've talked about almost every instrument in the yep. kit, even though I didn't want to. But that's okay. No, well, yeah, I kind of got excited a little yeah, bit. Well, well we got we to gotta tell them what it is, right? Why yeah. we did this. No, absolutely. So I, I think ultimately, look, uh, it, this is our first as 3D dentist and my first time in my career, right. uh, 15 years of being a quote-unquote industry leader, that I've actually had my own product in a sense, yeah. right? And so I wanted to make sure that it, it was good quality, that it was very useful, that it was different, and that it solved a problem. And I would like to think that we've done all those things. Now, um, it's our first product. I would love your guys' support in our pre-order uh, here. Uh, and so uh, initially, if you want the kit before July 1st, 2021, it won't be available through distribution until after that. Right. So if you want to be one of the first to have the kit, uh, we have a limited number of uh, pre-orders available. And then after that, it'll be sold through distribution. And so uh, you're going to get the kit, you'll get a special price, and you'll get a special offer from 3D Dentists along with it. And so we want to make sure that it's great, that you uh, use a product that's going to be fantastic. So if you want to get the kit, the retail price is $2,500. Our uh, pre-order special is $1,995. And all you got to do is go to 3D-Dentist.com or T-BoneSpeaks.com, and you'll be able to find the kit on our website You'll place your order online, and they'll be in your office by July 1st at the absolute latest, and we have a limited number of pre-orders. And here's my promise to you. Number one, the materials are guaranteed. If you have an instrument issued, uh, TBS will stand behind the That's instrument. That's huge, huge. Yeah, it's fantastic. And then you have my personal guarantee that you're going to like the kit, okay? 
it's useful, it makes sense, and that once you use it a few times, you're gonna be like, wow, uh, this is way easier for my team to set up, it's way easier for us to break down, and it gets more, I say 80%, but it, you're probably right, it's probably closer to 90, 95% yeah. of our surgeries can be done with this. And that's right. soft tissue surgeries, I mean, that's everything. hard tissue surgeries, that's yeah. full arch cases. I mean, the only thing I'm bringing extra to this kit, mm -hmm. I mean, that, to me, that's, yeah. That's what makes this so special. In a single cassette. Right. Is there's nothing cassette. I don't know of anything on the market basically that I could go and just say, Hey, I need this cassette and now I've solved ninety percent of my problems. Yeah. I mean, right. Other than this kit, I need a handpiece, yep. a burr, and then my PRF box. Yep. Right. That's I mean that's it. literally yeah. what I'm bringing to my yeah. surgeries now. And that and you know, obviously outside of materials, but um, from a, from that standpoint. And, and it's so nice. Look, I think it's another thing that I, that I'm passionate about is I think we're moving into a realm in dentistry where we're giving too much power to very few companies out there. They're going to be able to start controlling how we do it, what we do. And I think we need to support our independence, support our small companies, and we need to support those that are innovative. What made some of the big companies great was they were innovative right. at the time that they were small. And then they got so big that it became hard to get innovative. Mm -hmm. And and I'm all ha happy for them. I went to, in, in fact, I went to a company and said, I'd like to develop a surgical kit. And the response I got was, "It's we don't need it. Yeah. And, and I disagree. I believe that dentistry is looking for a single product, not, hey, here's the instrument list. Go buy all the instruments. Yeah. <laughs> Just it's click, one skew. Click yep. one button and you get everything that you need. It shows up, put together. It shows up ready to go. And, and to me, that's awesome. So, Haseeb, no, any last-minute words from you? No, I mean, um, seriously, thank you so much. And, as and you, you guys said, make more than the 3D kit. We do, yeah. yeah. Our, I mean, I mean as granted, they got to buy the 3D kit first <laughs> before they buy anything else, selfishly speaking. My, ki so. my kids need to go to college or something, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so the, the biggest flagship product that we have is basically the frames, right? The forceps with springs. That's yeah. the base the biggest thing and then of course there's a lot of features to it but um you know thank you so much for your trust yeah. in in me and tbs thanks for delivering i i question yeah. it I, and i know you could be <laughs> tough i i have heard about that but you were uh, you were tough and you had some thoughts and everything and but that's what makes us better right that's yeah. what that's what it is you pushing us to the next and you basically having it develop and uh, I'm extremely proud of what we have here and i honestly and my team can't wait to sell this and you know just really make people better with innovative, cool, sexy, unique instrumentation that just makes their life a lot easier. As you said it yourself, you guys do surgery so much and everything like this, but if this could help you, then imagine what it could do for everyone else out there. Yeah. So thanks a lot, guys, for having me. Sully, thank you. Uh, Always, man. Yeah, there you go. Sully, do you want to do our outro for, for my podcast? Thanks for uh, <laughs> listening to the T-Bone Speak slash Melodious podcast. We will see you next time. <laughs> thanks, everybody. All see right. you soon. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal. Remember to keep striving for excellence and we'll catch you on the next episode.